since man invented the wheel, our very lives have depended upon wheels, travel, and transportation. Early Americans, hardy pioneers, men and women of courage and ambition broke the untamed plains to the rumble of wheels, carving the ruts of the great trails deeper into the prairie side of Kansas, over desert and mountain ranges, fording swollen rivers, fighting rainstorms and blinding blizzards. Wheels carried their families and all their earthly possessions westward, ever westward. Wheels were the lifeline of the West. And always there was the law of the frontier. The man who holds the roads and mountain passes rules an empire. Well, Mac, how is the sheep business? 20,000 I'll be sharing this year. Mmm, that's very good. For something that smells so bad. <laughs> I don't mean that bad. <laughs> okay, get back, fellas. Let the mail through. That's this. You boys better wait out here till we get this untangled. Wait, wait, always we have to wait. Because Monsieur Mari must be the first one to get his mail. That's why. Why not? Seeing Jeff the Mar opened the first wagon trail through this territory. He built this town. And he got plenty rich, but that don't say he owned the whole country. Patience, friend Naval. Jeff is an old man, and he's done a great deal for us. Fourteen letters, five postal cards, and a seed catalog. Either more people ought to write to us, or we ought to quit hauling the mail. <laughs> Just add a can of bitter, Tony? Well, yes, no, Mr. Marr. My leg's better, but at my last stop, my shoulder was so bad off, I declare I could hardly lift a glass of beer. No, it's too bad. On your way out, take that keg of nails over to the White House, will you? Sure. He's coming home, Gideon. Really? Arrives in Pawnee the 9th of May. That's less than a month. We have a wagon train leaving for Kansas the 1st of May. I suppose you want to go along to fetch my girl home, eh? I'll be there when the train pulls in. If that tooth and teapot ever gets there. Morning. Morning. Behind part is any mail for me, named Bent. So you're Stephen Bent. That's right. I'm expecting some. Yeah, I've heard the name, but never anything good connected with it. Is your mail, Mr. Bent? Oh, thank you. Sort of off your range, aren't you? Well, for the time being, yes. I'm with the Missouri Central Railroad. I expect to see a lot more of you gentlemen in the future. <laughs> well, thanks again for the mail. Just a minute, Bent. Yes? About seeing more of us. Don't go out of your way. The town's pretty crowded. Well, you don't seem very hospitable, Mr. Moore. I didn't intend to. And you might pass the word along to your company when you get back. Well, I came here to get my mail, Mr. Marr, not to argue. But as long as you've brought up the subject, I'd like to answer you. Nobody asked you to. Well, nevertheless, it might prevent trouble, and the railroad doesn't want to have any trouble with you or any other freight hauling outfit. Will the railway come this far, Mr. Bent? Well, we hope to go through as far as Santa Fe. Then we'll meet up with the Pacific Short Line. Then we'll have a market west as well as east. Why don't you tell them the rest of it? Who'll pay for the engines? the car, the rail, and the people will. And a land which will be condemned and taken from you. And taxes which will keep you and your children poor. And in sheep and cattle, these trains will kill on your unfenced land. It's 50 years too soon for a railroad through this territory. Why, the railroad's an octopus. And men like Bent, who build it, are parasites that'll live off your blood and sweat. What do you think we ought to do, Mr. Ma? Stop them now while you've got the chance. Don't let them cross the Kansas line. Now, what do you say to that, Mr. Bent? Just that I'm surprised that an intelligent man should make such a statement. Since Mr. Marr is in the freighting business, naturally his opinion of his competitors is bound to be biased. Sure, you'll have to give up some of your land for the railroad right away. And your taxes will be higher. But that's because the value of your property will be multiplied a dozen times. If our trains destroy your stock, We'll gladly pay damages, but, and this is the important thing, 
Our stock cars will take your sheep and cattle fat and prime to the market. And what's more, I promise the railroad will pay back to you in profits twice what it takes away. I think he's right, laddie. Really? You fool. I'm sorry you feel that way about it, Mr. Marr. Get out. Well, this doesn't belong to me. I'm sorry, Skeen. How do you know my name? Well, your reputation as a man who gets things done has traveled far. How'd you like to work for me? Get out. Lottie, with money you need, if someone's got a wee bit we'd like to invest. Oh, fine, thanks. <laughs> Maybe sometime we come talk with you, eh, Mr. Vance? Yes, come on. We'll, uh, we'll talk it over. We. Oui. Well, goodbye, boys. Ah, thank you. Goodbye. Get in. If he sets foot on my land, I want him off it. Or under it. Yes, sir. Explains how Jeff the Mark can keep all the freighting business in the southwest tied up. You sure we can get through? Well, we'll have to blow off those big ledges. Even then, we'll need double-header locomotives to haul the grade. How much will it cost? Oh, around 9,000 a mile. Can we do it for that? Uh-huh. Strike the equipment, we'll go back to camp. All right. Closer, Mr. Bent. What are you waiting for, Skeen? You saw the sign back there, didn't you? Mm-hmm. You smashed the lock, didn't you? I did. And you knew you were trespassing. Well, I have a privilege to survey in the land commissioner's office. That's no good here. This cutoff belongs to Jeff Mar. He built this road, and for 30 years he fought Indians, bandits, and outlaws to hold it. Well, I don't deny that he deserves a lot of credit for opening the territory, but... Those who tried to take it from him are buried on both sides of the trail, Mr. Bent. I appreciate that, too, but... Then take your men and get out. You know, Skeen, as times change, so do people and their needs, even their laws. As the country moves westward, distances become greater. Yesterday, it was wagons. Today, it's rails. Who knows what it may be tomorrow? We won't worry about tomorrow. Take your men and get out. And if I don't? Tiny. 
Howdy, Mr. Bent. Nice day, ain't it? Get our horses. Does that settle your business here? For now, yes. You're too intelligent a man to think you can stop the railroad. You'll never get over these mountains. Mountains won't stop us, Gideon. Jep Samar will. Don't try it again. Next time we'll bring rails. That'll be your monument. Most men leave less. Goodbye, Mr. Bent. Goodbye, Gideon. You've done a good job. And I don't mind admitting that you've hurt me plenty. My fight's against time. In spite of all you've done, I wish I had you with me instead of against me. Excitement like this is mighty bad for my weak heart. The only transit this side of St. Louis. Looks like Scheme is right. I guess old Jeff has stopped it. That doesn't sound like you, Steve. You're generally pretty good at picking up the pieces. If there's only some way of getting under that old firebrand's hide. What in the world would a man like Jeff Lamar love more than power and glory? Of course. Of course, what? That letter. What letter? Never mind. <laughs> I'll see you all in Pawnee on the 9th of May.
Here they come. Hey, there's a friend of yours over there, Tiny. You'd better pull in your neck. Uh, I thought I'd put him in the hospital permanent. Keep them wagons out of Pawnee. Brannigan, you give me a pain right square in my sciatic. Put up, you pair of Missouri mules. Oh, so you like that hospital, did you? Yeah, but this time it's going to be different. I'm going to bite your ears off right down to your pocket. Oh, yeah. Take it easy, Tiny. Take it easy. Maybe it's right. for the railroad, Brannigan? No. I'm speaking for myself and the boys. We ain't been paid for weeks. So the railroad gets no more freight until we get our money. Who represents the railroad around here? Where will I find him? A fellow by the name of Bent. <laughs> but he ain't shown up in more than a month. Bent, your fight's with him, not with me. I'm unloading. Oh, no, you ain't. What do you say, boys? Oh, oh. Let him on your own. Move them wagons out of here, leather back, or we'll move them for you. Better take it slow, Brannigan. Unload them. One side, but... Oh! Hold it. Here we are. I'm paying a dollar a piece to help unload my wagons or else get out. What do you say? What'll it be? All right. Let's get it done. All right. Snap to it. The same goes for you. Stupid, thick-headed bungler, Brannigan. I was doing the best I could, Clanton. Let a sagebrush mule push you, knock out the few brains you have, and then steal your men. Pull the gun on me. I've heard that's quite an old custom in the West. But, champ, I didn't have a chance. I pay you to wreck the railroad, and what do you do? You let a load of freight slip into the warehouse. That helps Bent, not me. Maybe it won't do him no good. He ain't showed up in more than a month. Where is he? Finished, I hope. Anyway, the banks in Topeka won't lend him another cent. I've taken care of that. If he does show up, the order still stands? The orders stand until I say they change. And the next time you make a mistake, Brannigan, you're through. <laughs> Tell me how glad he was to meet you and how much he admires you. Hello, Gideon. How do you do? Mr. Bent's been so nice. He even made him get the train here sharp on time just for me. Didn't you, Stephen? Well, I'll, I'll get your trunks. Oh, no, Stephen had not set of the Pawnee out. Well, I'll get your carriage. Oh, let's walk. It'll feel good to stretch my... Uh -huh, to get some exercise. <laughs> come on, Stephen. Come on, Gideon. Gideon's just like one of the family. He taught me how to ride. 
Remember that half loco fellow Nino gave the picture off my hand? Uh-huh. You thought I was dead, I guess. He kissed me. Then he got mad and made me get back on that horse and stick there. Well, I imagine Gideon has a habit of sticking to anything once he starts it. What's the matter, Gid? You haven't said a word. Oh, Tam Planton, of all people. What brings you to for me? You. Me? Well, thanks for the compliment. I've heard it said that you're afraid to come back. Well, in that case, you can run and tell your friends that I'm here. We all like to appear brave in front of ladies. Just a minute, then. Excuse me. Maybe you won't like to welcome the boys that have planned for you. Well, I'll take my chance. You don't fool me, Ben. I know the fix you're in. I know all about those notes in the Bank of Kansas. But I'm willing to help you out. Well, it's mighty considerate of you. I got a proposition to make to you about the Missouri Central. Well, that's what I thought. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested. Now, wait a minute. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take the road off your hands, and I'll see that you make a reasonable sort of profit. She's not for sale. All right. Don't say I haven't warned you. Boys, look who's here. Get Benny out of here. What's the matter? Well, you better go get him. I know, but please, what? please. their money. They'll never get it as long as you and Clanton are here to Shanghai them and leave me short-handed. He hasn't got the money. He can't pay you. Why not? That's what I was. You've We're always not. been paid, haven't you? Sure, but always late. I may have been late, but you've always been paid. You ain't kidding these men anymore. They're not dumb. They can see. While they're going hungry, you're spending their money on fancy clothes and women.
I'd still say I'd rather have you with me than against me. <laughs> oh, that was the best fight I'd ever seen. Are you all right? <laughs> what are you doing down here, Tiny? Oh, just having yourself a little fun. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you have a reservation for me, Rita Molyneux. Oh, Miss Molyneux, yes. Uh, would you just register, please? Rita! Stephen, you rascal. I'm glad to see you. Oh, I'm glad to see you. I was afraid you wouldn't get here. Uh-oh. Don't tell me you ran into another door. Small one. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you wait for me in Topeka? Well, they were gunning for me again. And if I hadn't been able to meet the payroll this time... Excuse me. I'll show you to your room. Thank you. Well, Steve, tell me what happened. Well, I suppose I... It went to mix up. It didn't hurt me. Come in. Sit down, Gideon. Take it easy, and this will be a nice, friendly visit. I would never have guessed it yesterday. Then we're even. I certainly never expected to see you with Stephen Bent. People are already saying you've turned railroader. Talk's cheap. And dangerous. That's why I'm here to warn you. Don't forget your Jeff the Mars man, Gideon. And he's a freighter. I don't think that concerns you, and I don't think that's why you're here. Now, wait a minute. Whether you believe it or not, I'm your friend. And I'm making you listen because it's the only way to get some sense into your head. Bent will use you to get in with Jeff the Maw. And if he does, he'll cut into your territory, take away your freighting business, and ruin every friend you have. Do you want to help him? You'd rather I help you. I know your outfit. All you want is Bent busted higher than a kite. You've got me wrong, Gideon. If I build the railroad, I'll take the northern route and leave the La Paz alone. Then you're a bigger fool than I thought. Now, will you get out? I think you're the fool, and a blind one at that. Or you wouldn't let Steve Bent even walk down the same street with Vinnie Moore. Bent isn't in love with her. But he is using her. And you're letting him get away with it. You're a lying... Listen to me, Gideon. Bent has a way with women. And Vinnie isn't the first one. Who do you think is financing him right now? It's no concern of mine. Rita Molyneux. You've heard of her. She and Bent are old friends. Too bad all of us haven't got away with women, isn't it? So long. You know, if I wasn't a little afraid of you, I'd tell you how beautiful you are. Afraid of me, Steve? Oh, everyone's afraid of Rita Molyneux. Fame, fortune, beauty. I know, and no heart. Oh, I didn't mean that. But you've heard it said. Who knows, maybe they're right. Is that why you've never fallen in love with me, Steve? I'll tell you the truth. Other I... men have, really. But you... Well, this is a business proposition. Oh, business and money. You're going to have a part in building an empire. I know it's a good investment. Otherwise, I wouldn't have persuaded my friends to lend you the money. I always make a good investment. You're a strange girl, Rita. Not so strange. Steve... So that's why you didn't wait in Topeka. Jeff Tamar's daughter. Oh, for a minute I was scared and a little jealous. Here you figure out the smart way to eliminate your competition, and I think it's love. Well, that's just it, Rita. It is love. Oh, Steve, now if you're trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be funny. It's true. Well, at least thanks for telling me. I could have gone on being in love with you for years and years and getting nowhere. Oh, if I know you, Rita, you'll always be falling in and out of love. No. Nope. Never again. Matter. Say, who's that handsome brute in buckskin? 
Oh, that's Gideon. Gideon? I thought Gideon was an angel. Where are his wings? He uses spurs instead. Already along the line? Excuse me a minute. I, I've got to go down before they leave. Next, you better shorten the trucks on your wheelers. All right. Ma'am, you all set to go? Everything's all right, Gib. Fine. I wouldn't get to say goodbye to you. If you ever do come to my pile. I'll be there in August. My birthday's on the 14th. Am I invited? You are. I'll be there. That's a promise? Already along the line! Goodbye, <laughs> Steve. Build your railroad if you can, but stay out of La Paz. What's the matter? I don't understand. I think you do. Well, I have nothing to say. I believe you're jealous of Steve. No, it isn't that. But just because Father hates Steve, you think I ought to hate him too. But Steve's works for the good of everyone. Can't you see that you and Father and Steve are all working for the same thing? He didn't waste much time, did he? Well, here's something he didn't tell him. He started out to make a fool of you. Just it. a minute. Are you sure you want to talk about Steve when he isn't here? Maybe you're right. I'll save it. Thank you. 
Let me look at you. <laughs> it's good to see you. Oh, I'm glad to be home. Did you have a nice trip? Oh, it was fun. Let's have a look at you. You do look grand. Any trouble, Gideon? No, sir. Well, you're right on schedule. The train was on time. That helped. Met Miss Vinnie at the depot. Miss Vinnie? Say, what's wrong between you two? Nothing, sir. Hey, you two will have to make up for lost time. And the most exciting part of the trip was the steam cars. You've no idea how they've improved. Why, they have special places to eat and sleep, like, like towers and dining rooms. Fancy folder off. At one time, we were running 25 miles an hour. Turn loose any one of my wagons, they'll go faster than that. Downhill. But we were running on the level. It's dangerous and unnecessary to travel that fast. Why is everybody in such a hurry nowadays? They say in St. Louis that someday trains will go from New York to San Francisco in less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. Who filled you with this interest in trains? Well, it's just that I've been traveling on them. Is that what you and Gideon have been quarreling about? Well, in a way. Vinny, I'm an old man. Nonsense. You're still the strongest, handsomest... And there's only one thing left in the world I care about. You. And what I've built up for you here in the territory. Someday it'll all be yours. Unless they take it away. Well, that'd be a pretty big job, wouldn't it? Stephen Bent's going to try. Mr. Mara, I'm telling you for the last time, we've demanded a reduction in the freighting rates. Very well, I'll reduce it 10 percent. No, that is not enough. And get someone else to carry your freight. Who? Perhaps we do that, too. Under railway smoke is blowing this way fast. We, oui, you bet you for sure. Mac, have I ever lost a bag of wool or a bale of hides for you? Through your nuts. Then my rates are fair for the service I give. But, man, you've got a Kenny I for your own purse string. But why not? I made you a rich man, you too, Duval. Now, why not let things go on smoothly and prosperously as they are instead of yelling railroad? But this country, she is beginning to grow. You men keep your stock on public land open to entry. If you let in the railroads, it'll bring an army of homesteaders that'll fend you out of your pasture. Plows will loosen the soil, the winds will come, and then what? Tell me that. I'm on it a long way off. It is no harm to us now. You can ship the loot out there outside, but I'm going to tell you if at last you're going to get Mr. Marr, unless you reduce... Get in. Yes? Don't accept their freight. Very well. The Missouri settles near enough to know, so we can reach the railhead. Hawkeye. <laughs> Fight's here, Gideon. I don't intend to see 34 years of work ground into dust overnight. I don't blame you, sir. I've sent for a man named Clanton. Champ Clanton? You know him? He's a railroad man. I'm aware of that. But we'll settle with him after we've used him to destroy Steve Bent.
come to your home, it'll be for the wedding. <laughs> Perhaps you'll be good enough to come over to my office, Mr. Bennett. I'd be very happy to, sir. You leave me little choice, Bent. I told you once you were not to come around here. I told you I'd be back. I understand your attitude towards me, Mr. Marr, but I don't respect your business judgment. What do you mean by that? Well, we're both losing money on the freight that you're hauling in your wagons between Santa Fe and Kansas. You lose more than that before we're through with it. Not only that, you're sacrificing a place on the board of directors of the Missouri Central. Come on, Mr. Marr. Join us. Be a part of this era of progress. I have nothing to do with you or your railroad. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Marr. You leave me no alternative except to petition the federal land commissioners. To condemn my cutoff? What else can I do? I wish you hadn't done that. Gideon, Mr. Bent is leaving La Paz immediately. I know he did. Oh, Stephen, Stephen, I'm so sure. Has Bent gone? 
Yes, sir. Good. Your trust in Gideon was very touching, Mr. Moore. Where is he? I've often wondered why men were afraid of his father. Now I know. From now on, you'll take orders from Clan. You're making a mistake, sir. I'm not asking for your opinion. Turn him loose and the trail will run red. You'll do as I say. We might as well settle this now, then, sir. You're pulling away from me, is that it? Yes, sir. You better go. Goodbye, sir. No, sir. Going off without me is like going off without the horse's tail. It can't be done. Oh, yes, it can. You're staying here. But you wouldn't want me to take orders from that there Clanton guy. It wouldn't be proper. You might bring your friend Brannigan along. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Brannigan? Nope. I'm going with you. Now, wait, Tiny. The old man needs someone here. Well, then why are you so anxious to pull out? Remember what Bent said that day in the cutoff? I was sort of busy that day. And he said, I'd rather have you with me than against me. That time has come. Do what you can for Vinny. Hey, Gab, when you get the party, will you send me out a bottle of that medicine for my love bag, Gideon! He's gone, Miss Vinny. Well, where? He said something about looking up that railroad pillar. Steve. in trouble. Clanton again? Throwing everything, from monkey wrenches to bombs. Even had the banks haul me in on the carpet. So? How'd you make out? Well, I no more than pacified the bankers when a bridge was dynamited over the plat. That'll set us back two weeks, at least. You know, Git, it all adds up to just one thing. What's that? Clanton's bankers will stop at nothing to ruin us. I never thought that, the old Jeff. What'd you say? Oh, nothing. I was just thinking out loud. Money and power are hard to buck, kid. And you said you wanted to build a railroad, didn't you? Yes, and we will. I got to hustle back as an important stockholder who wants to know why we need so much money. <laughs> well, keep things coming, kid. You can count on us at this end. Thanks, fella.
Yes, sir. Tell Mr. Moore that Mr. Clanton is here from Topeka. Yes, sir. Come in. I'll wait out here. Yes, sir. How do you do, Miss Moore? Nice day, isn't it? You're waiting for my father. I'll tell him you're here. Thank you. Your man has attended to that. Then you'll excuse me. I saw your friend Stephen Bent in Pawnee. Well? Well, I hope you won't misunderstand me. But I'm a friend of your father's. And the information I have for him may interest you, too. If you have any information for my father, I suggest you give it to him personally. You see, I found out who's backing Stephen Bent. Her name is Rita Molyneux. She's quite a famous person. Mr. Marr will see you now. Excuse me. Bent certainly has a way with women, hasn't he? Miss Vinnie. Miss Vinnie. I thought you were in for me with the wagon. I ain't wagon boss for more. Well, why not? Clinton give Brunning him my job. Father won't stand for that. I'll go in and tell him. Oh, don't do that, Miss Vinnie. Something terrible's wrong, and your father's mixed up in it, too. No, I don't know what to do. Shh. I find a way to stop that, and now you won't agree. There must be some other way. There probably is. But it's not as quick or as certain. It's no use, Clanton. I won't be a party to deliberate murder. Tiny. Father said... That's what I've been telling you. Buttingham's got your pa's wagons loaded with men and headed for the cutoff to wipe out that railroad crew. Saddle my horse. Why? Never mind. Saddle my horse. on my back, and calluses on my hips, and calluses on well, my... I warned you in Topeka. Well, if you think this trip was for pleasure, you're wrong. Well, the point is, it's not only uncomfortable, but it's dangerous. Well, there was nothing else I could do. I'm under pressure, Steve. My friends want to know. You're a great gal, Rita. Tell me the truth. The going's a little rough, isn't it? Oh, old Jeff and his crowd have resorted to everything short of murder. I really shouldn't take you up there in that cutoff. When I was a little girl, I used to run wild in the Louisiana swamp. And I had to look out for cotton mouths and gators. And I don't mind telling you, it's been a great help to me in my career. I see what you mean. <laughs> Come on.
still got into him, Miss Jenny. Something yet for breakfast? It's all that rain, Tiny. Look. Bob, it's like... Yeah, chip full of cans and cutthroat. Just like I told you. Any minute, you got enough. We must get moving fast. All right, come on. I wouldn't trade places with Steve Ben even to get rid of my asthma. You'll get it, sure. I don't care. Well, that's it, your part talking. You really don't mean that, Miss Vinnie. I do. Of course, it wasn't Steve was thinking about. He's my idea of a yellow coward. Gets me as a thinking about Gid. Gideon? Yeah. I sure thought a lot of him before he took up with them railroaders. Kind of bad now, though. Him up there in that cutoff, too. He's up in the cutoff. Yeah. What do I care? Listen, all your life you remember how Gid loved you. How you had a chance to save him. Only you wouldn't give it a try. You ride the Lapaz. Tell Father I'm up in the cutoff. <laughs> May I present my friend, Gideon Skane? How do you do, Mr. Skane? Pretty good, thanks. The gang calls him Gid. Consider me in the gang, too. Welcome. Steve has told me a lot about you. Not everything, I hope. He's been under the impression that you were in love with me. Believe me, Gid, I never mix business and love. I'd be more apt to fall in love with someone like you. Look out, Gid. <laughs> oh, I wonder if you'd show Miss Mullen how we hope to get through that cut. I'll be glad to. May I help you? Thank you. And, and explain why it costs so much. All right. Pretty steep climb. I can climb, can't you? <laughs> Did you hurt yourself? No. You help me like this, and I'll manage. You can't go back that way. Let me go with your pants, but you might get hurt. Temper seems to run in your family, doesn't it? Men, get 
your horses out of the way. Get your guns and ammunition. Gideon are caught up there. Their lives are at stake. Will you ride with me? I'll ride with you, Jesse. Me too, Mr. Ma. Thanks. Get your horse. Come on, we get the Come on, we're doing this. Catch up. Charge here. Cut a short fuse. Right there. It's warm, isn't it? You don't like me, do you? I don't. Because you found me here with Steve? It's a bet means nothing to me. Oh, then it's Gideon. No. Leave me alone. Because I know what it means to be in love. Suspicious of every other woman. Hurts inside, doesn't it? Oh, let's stop being childish and get this thing straightened out. Is it Gideon? going on out there. More than likely one of us will lose a man she loves. No, it isn't Gideon. It's Steve. You got a handkerchief. Here. Use it for me.
saw you two together at the hearing order. Hmm? I threw off the hand. I tried to mix love and business. I should have known better. But you say you didn't love Steve. Don't be an idiot. That one in Buckskins I'm worried about. You know, Rita, I like you. things up. Well, ain't you ever satisfied?
Hello, kid. Hello, Tiny. How do you feel? Fine. Are you feeling all right? Well, I am and I ain't. All the fighting they do, my nerves no good. <laughs> we still want you on the board of directors of Joy Central. Oh, I'm too old. Well, we need the benefit of your experience. Oh, come on, Dad. Then you can live in town and see your grandchildren once in a while. Well, I'll go on one condition. What is it? Well, could you fix it, Steve, so that I could ride on one of them big locomotives? Just one. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>